All right, we're just under a week away from the MLB trade deadline. Today is Wednesday the 26th, and the Mariners just made a move with the Toronto Blue Jays. It's not a blockbuster deal, but it's a move, and I'm going to try to cover all of the moves that the Mariners make up until the deadline. So who did they get from the Blue Jays? Well, they got reliever Trent Thornton. He was DFA'd last week when the Toronto Blue Jays acquired Yenesis Cabrera. Um, so if we go over to the Mariners PR. Infielder Mason McCoy was sent to the Blue Jays and Marco Gonzalez was transferred to the 60-day injured list in order to make room for Thornton on the 40-man uh, roster. Thornton, who is 29, will be optioned to AAA Tacoma. In four relief appearances with Toronto this season, he, ha he has 0-0 zero in zero with a 1.69 ERA with one walk and five strikeouts. In 22 appearances with AAA Buffalo, he's 5-1 with a 4.18 ERA, 18 walks and 26 strikeouts. Thornton has appeared in five major league seasons, all with Toronto going 7-14 with a 4.77 ERA, 98 walks and 249 strikeouts, over 260 in the third innings. He was originally selected by the Houston Astros in the fifth round of the 2015 MLB draft. Now McCoy, who is sent to the Blue Jays in exchange for Thornton, is 29. He's batting 234 with 53 runs, 18 doubles, 3 triples, 11 home runs, 55 RBIs, 20 steals, and 87 games with AAA Tacoma. McCoy has appeared in 632 minor league games between the Orioles and the Mariners, batting 260 with a 730 OPS. And as you remember, Marco Gonzalez was placed on the 15-day injured list on June 3rd, and there's still no timetable on when he might be making a return. Now looking at Thornton's StatCast page, again, he's pitching in just four games this year, but he features a four-seam fastball, a curveball, a sweeper, sinker, and a slider. His fastball averages 94 miles an hour, curveball and sweeper 80 miles an hour, the sinker at 94.5 and the slider at 88.4. Now it's worth noting that back in 2022, his curve spin was in the 98th percentile. And as you look at the movement on his pitches, the curveball and the sweeper, I mean, his sweeper looks really effective. These three pitches are sweepers. And then that curveball just dives off the table. It's not quite a 12-6 curveball. It does have a decent amount of horizontal break to it, but the vertical drop on that is pretty ridiculous. And then he's got 96, 97 in the tank when he needs it. And this year, looking at his curveball compared to average, his curveball had about 14% more inches of drop than the average curveball. The slider had about 8% more drop than the average slider. And horizontal break, the curveball had about 11% more than the average curveball. And the sweeper has about 21% more break than the average sweeper. Slider about 13% more than average. So again, it isn't a big name trade, but it seems that Justin Hollander, Jerry Depoto, the scouting department, pitching development seem to know what they're doing, especially with the bullpen arms. They brought in Trevor Gott this offseason, Justin Topa, uh, Taylor Saucedo, Gabe Spire, all these guys that you didn't know what you'd get out of them, but they've all been solid out, out of the bullpen. And by adding the depth in the bullpen, it takes some pressure off of Devin Sweet, Isaiah Campbell, Prelander Baroa, other guys that might be needed out, out of the bullpen at some point. So let me know your thoughts in the comments if you have any thoughts at all on this trade. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on, on all Mariners and MLB information. And stay locked on Twitter because it's about to get pretty wild here in the next week until the MLB trade deadline. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. All right, guys, goodbye zone and don't forget it.